We moved into our house. We'd been there about 18 months. Our daughter was about 18 months old. And my husband was working from like 7 in the morning to 7 at night. Saturdays, you guys know about CPA firms, right? They like own you for a couple of years. Uh, worked about four hours on Saturday. He came home one, one day and his boss, we'd gone with the second tier firm. Do you guys know what a second tier firm is? Okay, you got the big eight or the big four now. Um, second tier firm is like a local firm, a regional firm, okay? We went with that because we wanted to stay in Utah, we wanted to stay by our family. We wanted to have a firm that had our same values. You know, so they were, um, they were some LDS folks. And uh, most of the partners were. Partners came in and talked to my husband and said, we've got some new business, but we don't have enough new business to hire another person. So what we'd like you to do is we want, we're asking all, all the accountants to start working on Sunday. That was, that one sentence has changed our life. You know, you, you have values. And you have your integrity. And you have things that are really important to you. And sometimes those are, and those will be tested. And we came home, he came home and talked to me. And we decided that the values that we had of him being able to, to be involved in church service, because he would have had to have uh, been released um, to work on Sundays, be involved in church service, to be together. This was like the only day I got to see him very, very much. His daughter would go to, he'd see her maybe if she woke up early. A lot of times he wouldn't even see her in the morning and he'd get home so late she was ready to go to bed. And we just looked at, we looked at our life and decided we didn't get to see each other. We didn't get to see our daughter. We had one person that could control our life. One person, make one decision, control our economic life, our church life, our just everything. So you have to change your plan. So what we did, we talked about it, and we decided that it would be better if we had... A hundred people that were our bosses, not just one person. So if one person didn't like us, or they had a bad day, or whatever happened, if they fired us, we still had 99 other people that, could, that, could, uh, that we could work for. Or if we decided that they did something that we didn't like, or they wanted us to cross the line we didn't want to cross, we decided we didn't want to... Uh, have that situation. So that was another motivation for us, go ahead, um, for us to be involved. So we looked at being an accounting firm. It was something that I really, really was enjoying. But you can't just go from saying, well, this is a great idea to being able to support a house and, and a family and, and all that stuff. It takes time and it takes effort. And at the time, there was, big eight, there was a big eight accounting firms. There was eight. Now there's four. The main reason why is because they had one client that was so big that they didn't want to lose that client. And I'm, and, I'm, and I'm saying this really simplistically, but you guys know Enron, right? And they made, they crossed the line. So those are some things that we decided we did not want to have anybody so big and important to us that, they, that we would cross the line. We could keep our values in place. And the second thing was we didn't want to do anything, anything like auditing. So we decided we, we, uh, we could go and uh, do more tax work, more bookkeeping work, more write-up work. Okay. Do you want me to try this? Let me try this. Sure. See if I can multitask. Okay. First thing we, we learned, cash flow is king. If you have something you're really good at and nobody knows about it and you can't sell it, you really don't have a business. So you have to be able to have cash flow. You have to be able to make money and have the money you make trickle down so that you can keep some of it, whether it's a product or service. Services are a little bit better because, in some ways, because more of the money you can keep because a lot of it is your own labor. Products are better 
like Lisa's because she doesn't have to work for everything. She creates it one time and then duplicates it and then she can go on the beach while people are buying her stuff. So we're a little bit different that way. So we both, but I love what I do. So this is what we did. We left our house, we went back to an apartment, left all our life savings there, went back to a little apartment, downsized our cars, decided we needed, we had five years, we wanted five years for us to be able to hire each other out of corporate America. And so that was, that was our new plan. Uh, we also wanted to be on insurance, so we figured we needed to be on insurance while we had some kids so that before we could be out on our own. So we decided to give it five years to see if we could do it. So we, we kind of tossed the coin. We both decided to try to find another job that would work, that we didn't have to work on Sundays or Saturdays, that we could um, increase our technical competence. And I just happened to have found a job, a, really, some, 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 a couple jobs actually. But the one I worked for that really worked well for us was Mrs. Fields' uh, Cookies. Do you guys have you ever heard of that? I was a corporate controller for her for a few years until she uh, ended up making some decisions and, um, and had to downsize as well. And it just so happened that she downsized about the same time that our five-year mark had happened and we had our third child. So after we had our third child, we were about to the point where we were breaking even. We were really close. We were really close. We just needed just a little bit more. So what we did was, oops, here we go. Okay. <laughs> okay, this is a, a hair trigger. We took an, one more class, a marketing class, because you, you learn about what to do and how to be competent with, with, your, with whatever you're passionate about, but you need to also learn marketing. So we went and took a class from somebody who had been marketing accounting services in Utah. And he taught us something that was uh, two, two really good things. One, if somebody asks you, can you do this, or how do you do this, you can say, this is what I think you need to do, but you know what, I have an associate, I can find out for sure, and I can get back with you. So we learned how to, even if you don't know all the answers, you can, you can guess or you can give your best guess and then go back, find out the real answer. Who was it that was saying that? If you don't know something, go and find it out. Was that you, Lisa? Go find it out. Probably Amy. I think it was Amy. Go find it out. So that was one thing he taught me was go find it out. The other thing he taught us was um, to make a successful business, you have to make five personal contacts a day. That's 25 a week. If it's Monday and you've made five, great, you got five for Tuesday. If it's Monday you didn't do five, you got 10 for Tuesday. If it's Friday and you haven't done 25, you got to make 25. We did that for two months straight, and that put us over the hump. We had enough money for our insurance. We had enough money for all the things we needed to be able to support ourselves. We kept doing that <clears throat> uh, until about, we did that for about a year, worked for people, and then we had an opportunity to purchase another company. We were living in Salt Lake at the time. We had, somebody approached us, they wanted, uh, one of my clients said, I heard that, uh, uh, a friend of mine said that, that her account's looking to sell her business. And I said, okay. I called the lady. She was down in American Fork, and, she, and we talked to each other. We talked to each other for two hours. It was like talking to myself. It was talking to a friend. It was like, like I would say a sentence and she would finish it. it. We had the same desire. We had the same way we looked at our clients. We had the same passion for helping people and the same level of integrity that we wanted to, to have the, the, uh, for a business. Um, she'd already had three other offers to buy the business before that. We went down and talked to her, <clears throat> came back, and we had, a, we had a guy in our ward 
who had harvested a business. And he said, if you guys ever need any advice or any, you know, if you ever have any questions, give me a call. We took him up on that. He came over to our house. Uh, <clears throat> he came over to our house. He did all these tests like the Myers Brick. Have you guys heard of that? The 360s. He did all these tests with us. And looked at the looked at the business, and he looked up to us and he said, this is a no-brainer. You guys have just got to do this. You guys will make it successful. It's a no-brainer. You need to do it. So with that advice, again, aligning yourself with people you can trust, having good mentors, like Lisa. Uh, <clears throat> we bought the business. We were able to bootleg it. We, had, we used all of our credit cards to buy computers. That was kind of hard to use three different credit cards to buy four different computers. Back then, they were not really inexpensive. They were like 1,500 each, 2,000 each, plus printers were like 1,000 each. I mean, it was a different world. <clears throat> um, but she was willing to finance us. So we, we were able to pay her over three years, <clears throat> which was great. We had never had, besides that, we we've, we've, we've never had any debt. <clears throat> Excuse me. This was kind of, yeah, um, this, is, this is kind of our, uh, the positioning map that we had. This is like the H&R the blocks over on this side, and this is the CPA firms on this side. So this is where we put ourselves in terms of marketing. We are not the least expensive, but we are qualified. So you got that. So, Hedgehog, who's red? Good to great. Thank you. Anybody? Okay. It's a book by Jim Collins, and it's a... Um, before I finish that thought, let me go back. After we had moved out of our house and to an apartment, some people bought our house. And they found out, they were in our ward, they found out why we had left because we were starting a business and um, Len was, wasn't working in, in the CPA firm anymore. And they called us after about two years and said, are you interested in that house anymore? Are you still interested in that? We'll work with you and, you know, because we were now self-employed, right? And we'll work with you and we'd, we'd love to have you back in the ward. And so we ended up getting our house back after all that. And so sometimes you don't always know why you have to make decisions, but that was kind of a serendipitous uh, thing for us. It was, it was nice to be able to go back. Getting back to Hedgehog. Okay. So a Hedgehog, what he did was he determined uh, what it looked like. Go, fight, win. Okay. What lights your fire? The middle of this part is your hedgehog. What are you passionate about? What makes you money? And what are, what are, what's the, what, what could you be best at in the whole world? That middle part is your hedgehog. That is what your business can be successful at. So we started defining that and working through that and figured out that one of our, uh, our hedgehog was really doing personal tax returns for individuals and businesses to maximize their, uh, to, to, to maximize so they would have the lowest tax rate possible and to do it legally. Oops, that's just really got a hair trigger. <laughs> You can, Lisa. Did I jump? No, I love it. Okay, go ahead. So, uh, tell, me, tell these kids, so accounting really did light your fire. Is that, was that really your hedgehog? Like, it is. You, you love numbers. You love, I, 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 because that's so far the other way from me, and I love that somebody loves that and is passionate about it. Like, that, that's what that's Yes. Um, when I was a stockbroker, I was not able to I was not able to promise something and deliver. Stock market is unusual. 
the, you, you never know if it's going to go up or down. It's a zero-sum game. Somebody wins, somebody else loses. I didn't like that. I wanted to be able to, when I said something, have it mean something, have, it, have me tell the truth, have me be honest, and have me be able to deliver what I said I was going to deliver. That was important to me as a person. And so when I was able to do a tax return, I was able to fulfill that core value that I had. And that, it's actually a core competence. It's a value and a competence, and it also uh, fulfilled me in, there was people that I helped that hadn't paid taxes for 10 years. And I was able to work with them with the IRS, get a payment plan, make sure they paid the very lowest possible so that they could get their life back. Some of them were, you know, recovering uh, drug addicts. Uh, not every, you know, I'm just saying, you know, there's all kinds of different uh, people. And, and some of them were just people that just didn't know how to do it and just got overwhelmed by it and just thought, well, I better not, I better not file because then I'll be on their radar or whatever. And so I, I just love that. I love being passionate about that. So did that, did that segue that a little bit better? I've given this talk a couple times, and it just is different every time. <laughs> OK. So let me, let me skip to the e-myth. In order to have a company, whenever you read books, not everything in the book is going to resonate with you. You need to use your own judgment and figure out what, what works for you and for your company. Just like when you're a parent. You know, you can get all this advice from people, all this financial advice, all the business advice, but you have to do it, you know, I mean, I remember, Lisa, you said you got bad advice from somebody you really trusted, and then they ended up buying your company. So you really have to, you have to, you know, and we have the advantage of being able to pray about it and, and, and having it resonate with us, having it confirmed with us. You have to basically have three things. You have to have a technician. So the technician is the person or the people that do the work that, that make the work, that um, they're good at it. And for us, that was accounting. Len was good at it, and I was good at it. We were both good technicians. He was a lot better on the write-up work, and I was a better on the tax work. We could both do it, but we both had different competencies. When we started growing, um, when you start growing, you can, you can be a business and be a technician, and that's all you need when you first start, really. But you need to have all three of these as you grow. So a manager... Uh, is someone who can then manage things like cash flow, inventory, um, employees, also manage processes. That all becomes a kind of a different job. The Peter principle is, is if, you have, if you're a good technician, and let's say then you're, you're, you're making widgets, and so the company says, I want you to now manage all the people that make the widgets. So they promote you. And so now you're the manager of the company making, of, of doing, making the widgets rather than one of the per people making the widgets. Some people aren't good at that next step. And they're promoted past their level of competency. And so uh, it's, it's the same thing in a business. You can be really good at something. But when you get to the next step and you have to manage that something plus processes plus people doing that, that's another job. Now, that's something that maybe you can outsource, and maybe you have to hire it, or hopefully, maybe you can do it yourself. Fortunately for us, um, uh, I could manage part of the business, and my husband could manage the other part. The people, the equipment, all that stuff. You can see that even after 32 years, I've got 18 employees, and I own 25 computers. I'm a little challenged still. But that hasn't been my job. That, that's not my job. My job is over here. And that's another thing, as a, as a couple, when you're, when you're doing business with your spouse, you got to have different jobs. Okay? The third thing is entrepreneur. You have to have somebody that sees the big picture. Now, we haven't always, we've, we've bought a couple different companies. 
Some of them have not done well. Remember the, K, the lady that was the canine groomer? She had somebody that went and picked up the, the remains and it didn't work really well. Well, you know what? We all do things like that. You got to know when to cut your losses. An entrepreneur is the person that kind of dreams big. My husband was the one that said, you know, um, I think we should, we should do every, all, the, all the processing ourselves. This is back when not a lot of people owned a PC, back in the, the dark ages. Uh, and he says, I think if we bought a computer, this was like back in 81, 82, there was a couple apples on campus at BYU. And I said, I, I don't know. He says, I, I can do it. I think we can do it. And so he had one of those little three and a half inch, what do they call them? Not floppies. Are they floppies? The three and a half inch no. one? Floppies? They call them those anyway? Because the floppies were, to me, were like the five and a quarter. Anyway, he had one of those for every client. It had to be put in and out every time. It was really interesting. But we have been on the cutting edge in Utah when we did, well, when they allowed electronic filing, we were the first firm in uh, Utah to give free electronic filing. But we saw that as the vision of the future. My husband saw it. He also saw licensing for tax preparers um, that weren't, were not CPAs. He saw that you needed to be licensed. So we had all our people licensed long before the mandate that happens this year uh, requires everybody to be licensed through the IRS. We had that a long time ago. Man, I, where I'm at the end of, my, uh, end of my speech here. So you need somebody that can see the future and see things changing. I mean, next month, we may not have a job. I mean, if they decide to change the tax law, and depending on who gets elected, I may not have a job. That's why we have, we have started doing other things as well. We do payroll. We do bookkeeping. My husband saw that about 12 years ago. He started having us do that because we thought that the tax law might change and we may not be able to do a lot of tax returns. We started with, yes, we got 12 minutes left. Okay, death, taxes. <laughs> okay, I want to do one other quick thing uh, before I end. If there was one thing that you could do that would do this, would you be willing to do this, okay? Just read through these, I'll, I'll highlight a couple of them. Live longer, have an overall healthier lifestyle, healthier diet, blah, blah, blah. Less overweight, be less overweight or obese, have increased life satisfaction, overall happiness, are more resilient and less depressed. Parenting, give birth to help with healthier babies, spend more time reading to your children, have children who participate in extracurricular activities. Have more college-educated children who can provide better for their self and their families. Have more money. Have a better job opportunity. This is one thing. And it's not exercise. Okay? You guys figuring out what this is? One thing does all this. Have lower risks of unemployment. Be better prepared to financially support yourself and your family. Participate more in civic and community activities. Better lifelong learning skills. Stronger teamwork and interpersonal skills. Increased ability to integrate ideas and concepts. Stronger writing and verbal skills. Higher critical and creative thinking as well as decision making skills. Self development. Improved self understanding. Who doesn't want that? Greater independence and feelings of control in your life. Superior leadership. Higher ethical and moral standards. Stronger social skills. Openness to diversity and racial understanding. Greater ability to make reasoned reflective judgments. Stimulating occupation. Guess what this is? This one thing. What? One thing you can do. What is it? Come on. Graduate from high school. What was it? Go on a mission? What else? Anybody else? Live the gospel. This, this is a study. This is a study that was done in Utah two years ago. The one thing that will do all of this is a woman getting a bachelor's degree. A woman getting a bachelor's degree. So guys, 
Make sure your wife has a bachelor's degree. Ladies, please get a bachelor's degree. This was a study done by Dr. Susan Madsen. And I, I'll, uh, I had the website on my other, but Aubrey had to help me. But it's uh, www.uvu.edu.wer. Anyway, we can, we'll put it on, but it is a study. LDS participants generally believe that learning, knowledge, and higher education are important. They believe their religion supports women attending college, but many do not feel they need to graduate. Now, this is a study, and these are the results. This is real. Many LDS women do not see the urgency in obtaining their college degrees. They believe that finishing them someday is fine. Someday usually doesn't come. Many LDS women cannot envision. We're finding this. This is really true. Women in Utah are not graduating. They're the lowest graduating uh, women in the entire nation. Many LDS women cannot envision a life of integration. They cannot imagine being simultaneously married, having children, and continuing college, even if only one class at a time. Some believe that women need to give up or sacrifice college for their husbands and families. Several participants said it was their duty to drop out of school. I probably would have done it if my husband hadn't supported me and said, this is our life insurance policy. I may not have. I don't know. I, wasn't, I didn't have to make that choice. In the minds of many LDS participants, going to college get lumps into the same category as going to work. If they believe they should not work, they also believe they should not attend college. Marriage or the birth of the first child is the end of college for many young women. I just, I just want to say, and, and there's a lot of other results here. There's a lot of other results from this study. But I am passionate about, uh, I felt like when I was ready to give this uh, lecture, that I needed to include part of this study for you, for both you men and you women. This is, this is not something you mess around with. You, you say more positive things to your children. You have less divorce. You have a better ability to deal with crises in your life. You think you're going to have crises? You think there's going to think, have something happen in your life? We know there are, right? We know that there are going to be things that that's part of the refiner's fire. Give yourself ability to deal with it better. Make sure that you can have as much as you can inside of yourself and educationally so that you can do it, OK? Um, any questions for me? I have a, I have a question. Lisa. So I, would love, I love how you took a regular, you know, like an idea that, may, that, that you made it your own. That's what I love is your hedgehog in the middle. You made it so it was different than what other firms could offer. I love that. I would love to know how, it, how you and your husband have been working together. Like you said, have your own job, expand on that a little bit more. Hold on, guys, don't start packing up yet. We still have about six minutes. So you, you were about to say. OK. Um, did you guys hear that question? She asked how. Uh, she liked how we developed our hedgehog. It kind of came. I don't know if I explained it really well, but it kind of came just naturally. I kept on learning and, and liking it more, and, and it was fulfilling a lot inside of me. And it was, it was who I came to be and, 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 and liked the job. I love what I do. Absolutely love it. I would have never, never even knew it existed when I was in college. I never knew something like this was there. And I never believed, I never knew that I would be in business with my husband. My mother never worked. And, and so I, I didn't even have that frame of reference. I just thought I was going to follow that pattern. So, uh, and the second question was, how do you work together with your husband? You have to have, um, when you are in business, it is a little risky, especially if you have a lot invested. You know, we, we put our name on the line for that note when we first bought that, that other company. I mean, we went from having 80 clients to she had 300 clients. So from 80 to then we were doing 380. And the guy said it was a no-brainer. 
that was huge for us, and, and, and it took both of us to be able to do that. We had to, it, it's kind of tough. You have to decide, you have to both be willing to take the risk, both be willing to take the responsibility for making it work. You have to be sounding boards for each other, and you have to stop talking about business at some point. Because we could go and talk about business all day and all night and all day the next day. When we got home, we worked from home a lot, but when it was 5 o'clock, we would actually have to say to each other, okay, let's shut this door and move on and not talk about business for the rest of the night. Sometimes it works. Sometimes I would say, I would think of something at the last minute, did we do payroll for blah, 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 and Len would say, um, and I'd have to ask his permission, is it okay if I ask you a question? Because you need to be respectful of those of those limits and your family time. The beautiful thing for us was we were able, because our value was our children, I have never worked full time after that, that five years. I, I haven't worked full time. I, I work two or three days a week and my husband works the other two or three days a week. During tax season, I work three days a week. Right now, I work one and a half days a week. I, I don't work and we have 20, well, we got 18 people right now. We'll probably have 25 in January. People work for us. And, and, and they do the majority of the work, and we, we're the managers, and we're the entrepreneurs. We're the ones that, that manage it. Did that, that answer yeah. your question? I wish somebody else had asked me a question. Because this, okay, there you go. Thank you. Um, you talked about the importance of getting a lot of money back. Yes. How did you get that out of your My five? Um, we did it a couple different ways. We got business cards, and anybody you meet, you got to be proud of yourself. And the one thing that was good about me being an investment advisor and stockbroker is they taught me how to sell, which I wondered why I had to do that, why I couldn't just go into the other job. But I had to learn, we had to learn different things, and I had to learn how to sell. So you have to learn how to open your mouth. And, um, and that's why, you know, going on a mission is a good thing because you learn how to open up your mouth. But sometimes I was too scared to do that, and so I would, what I would do is I would um, find things like, uh, in the newspaper, they used to post all the jobs in the newspaper before KSL, right? All the jobs were in the newspaper, and so I would go through those, and I would send out resumes. I would send them a letter that said, you know, I'm, I don't want to work full time, but this is my experience, and I could come in and we could help you with accounting so you could get two people's great experience but not have to pay for somebody. And, and that was one thing I would do. Um, that was one thing we would do is, is if I couldn't get in front of somebody, we would send those out. Um, we would do flyers, you know, um, uh, send out business cards. Um, Another thing I did was we found everybody that had new businesses, we f got a mailing list of all the new businesses, people that had registered with uh, Department of uh, Doppel, Department of Professional Licensing, or who had started a corporation or an LLC that had an idea and knew they had to get an entity structure. When that happened, I got their names and I sent them a letter. I'm, I'm an entrepreneur too, and I understand what it takes to make a business run, and I can outsource for you, and I can help you with some things that maybe you're not really good at, like accounting or entity structure or some of those things. I can help you with that for a fraction of the price that you're paying. So I would, a lot of times I just send out letters. That's what I did a lot of times. Now you've got social media, the internet. Wow, wow, I wish I would have had that. Yeah, what is your question? Um, I noticed that you. So you got two questions, go ahead. I noticed that you listed two books that you were saying did the great. Right. Research. How would you say reading compares to actually like transferring, like how well does the knowledge or how, that you get from reading books, how well does that go from the book to your business or how have you applied that and has it made a big difference? Or? Um, my husband reads things and I read things and we usually have to talk about it. If we're in agreement, we're both oldest children, okay? So you know birth order and all that, right? We're both oldest children, like our way, take full responsibility, but we like things our way, we like things to be our idea, you know. If we both agree, it's a winner. <laughs> you know, we read books, we do things like that. So that's kind of been my, my gauge. Do you have one more quick question? Yeah.
Okay, so the question is, um, how did how much time did I spend with my children after? Well, we worked out of our house for till 1991. That's 20 years. So we worked out of our house for the first 11 years we were married. I graduated in 81, so about 10 years. Worked out of our house. So I was my kid's homeroom mother. I taught uh, math to a whole bunch of kids at school. I was, I was there. I walked them to school. Sometimes Len walked them home. We were back and forth. We did have to have a nanny. We had a surprise little boy after, yeah, who's 14, and um, uh, he was great. He is great, and that's another story, but uh, a really big story. But anyway, I, I had a nanny for him for a little while uh, that came a couple days a week, BYU student that came and, and, and taught him swimming. Anyway, um, but I, I felt like between me and my husband, besides a couple of days, we have been with our children. When they come home from school, when they leave for school, usually it's my job to make sure that they get off and <laughs> prayers and scripture and stuff getting off. And my husband's there when they get home, and we are there when they get home. And here's the deal. Who wants a gig like her? She works a day and a half, but gets the benefits of owning the company and really having your cake and eat it too. You are, I, I, I love this, and I love the, the charge that you girls get an education. Find out finish. something that makes you tick. Please, yes. finish. So, thank you so much, Chris. Here's You're a welcome. Gift.